morning, everybody. Welcome to Napanee Baptist Church in Napanee, Ontario, Canada. We're so pleased that you decided to join us this morning, and we hope that you find the service that you will watch will be a blessing to you and your soul. And uh, we're going to have our opening prayer now, and we'll use the, the themes that were in that opening video. Heavenly Father, help everyone who is watching this service today to lay down their burdens. Lay them down at the foot of the cross and just walk away. Leave them with you. Lay down their heart. Those struggles that they may have today at home with trying to juggle all the things that are required during this pandemic. Just let people, allow people to let them go and let them lay them down at your feet. And let them come to this service today to come as they are. Because that's all that Jesus requires is that you come to him as you are. He doesn't require anything more than that. And he knows that you're broken. And he knows that you need to be redeemed. So if you open your heart to him, he will do that. And he will lift all those burdens that you laid down at the bottom of his cross. Ask that you bless everyone who is watching today's service. And that you give them peace. And give them uh, courage to struggle with the situations that we face right now. And I ask all of this in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we need to do. We need to rest in His provision, in His strength, and in His knowledge. Of thy loving 
rest in him, we find out how wonderful, how amazing, how incredible he is. And he will make a way. situation, you make a way. Father, we thank you that in every uh, circumstance, we find you faithful. And Father, we thank you for how you have provided for us each and every day. And Father, it's out of thankful hearts that we now give to you a portion of what you have given to us in thanksgiving for all that you do in our lives. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. He keeps me singing. Really, he does. He keeps me singing. Let's stand and sing. I 
starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every singing to amen therefore since the promise of entering his rest still stands let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it for we also have good for we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did but the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed now who have obeyed or no now we now we who have believed enter that rest just as god has said so i declare on oath in my anger they shall never enter my rest and yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world for somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in the in these words on the seventh day god rested from all his works and again in the passage above he says they shall never enter my rest is it going on the next page uh, it's verse 11. oh okay therefore since it still remains for some to enter that rest and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience god again said a certain day calling it today this he did when a long time later he spoke through David as in the passage already quoted. Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Now we're going to sing another uh, hymn. It talks about hiding in him and resting in his, uh, in his strength when we are weary. Let's, let's stand and sing.
All except Daryl, that is, because he's coming up to do our prayer and share time. Daryl, if you'd come up. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. And what a great morning it is. Again, as we say each and every week and time after time, it doesn't matter what's going on. It's a great day because we can all think back to that day when God saved us and once we have that kind of in our sights and we realize that, nothing else matters. Today, let's just uh, take time out. We'll pray for everybody here that had the wherewithal and the drive to come out to church and, and were able to be here as part of our numbers. And for all those who can't be or all of those who aren't here. And we'll pray for them and we'll pray for each other and uh, lift each other up and give everybody over to God and just that God strengthen them and that God embolden them and that God keep them uh, searching if they can't be here to get into their word and for this to be a daily thing like breathing and eating and we'll pray for our church and the church leaders here and uh, we pray that God will hold this church in his hands and hold our leaders in his hands and uh, and uh, just equip them and equip this church and use this church for whatever his purposes may be and we'll pray for our pastor same thing that God would hold him and encourage him and embolden him and equip him and give him every single exact thing that he needs and then we will praise take time and we will praise God for this body of of Christ the ones that are here and the ones that can't be here and we'll praise God for this church and its leaders and all that he's done with this church and the leaders that he's brought here to this church and of course we'll praise God for our pastor the Lord brought him from where he did to where he is and that be directed all by the hand of God and you know I would like to take a second and praise God for this series we think of the Ten Commandments as something that we teach in small kid class right well just let's just go over the Ten Commandments kids but these commandments are for all time through all ages for all of man and uh, it was these these Ten Commandments really that God used to get a hold of my heart I've shared this story numerous times with the pastor but I was working away and listening to a message and the message that was on the radio the preacher said was God just in what he did in the Old Testament and how he handled people and how he flooded people and how he had Israel smite people in a and I thought, first the thing I thought was, yeah, what do you got to say about that? Because my God, in my mind, the God that I fashioned would never do such a thing. But the God of the Bible is not that. And thank God for these Ten Commandments and that message, because that's what stirred my heart and helped me to maybe take the first two commandments and, uh, and start taking them seriously. And then, of course, in, uh, in th through reading scripture, I came across the story of the rich young ruler and asked Jesus that all-important question and, and Christ threw the law at him. And it's these Ten Commandments. This is where it starts, friends, is realizing that we're sinners and that we need a Savior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are in the business of saving. We thank you, Father, for your perfect plan. And thank you for your law, Lord. Thank you for these Ten Commandments. As one uh, preacher I listen to talks about, he says it's a mirror. So we use this law, and we look at this law, and it reflects, it shows us how sinful we are. And we all know if we break one law, we've broken it all. And we know the penalty for that. So we just thank you, Lord, for your law. We thank you, Father, that our pastor is doing a great series on this, God. And may it strike to our hearts. May each person here and each person watching at a later date, Father, may they think about this and realize this. We thank you, Father, for everybody here. And we pray, Lord, for those that can't be here. Thank you for the hunger, Lord. And we just pray that uh, it's delivered right here from this pulpit, that your word goes forward, Lord. And... It's heard, and it strikes hearts. We thank you again, Lord, for this great church and the leaders you've brought to us, Father. 
And we thank you for the shepherd you've given to us. May you be with him today, Father, as he brings forth your word and your law. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning again, everyone. It's great to be with you. And uh, we are having a beautiful morning. The sun shines out. And we are here to worship our God and be gathered together as his people. And we just give him praise for his faithfulness and how he's taken care of this church. As Tom has mentioned and Daryl has mentioned, it's really been incredible and miraculous in many ways. And so we are still here. We are still alive and kicking and we are still on the move and we want to keep preaching the word of God and we want to keep being true to the gospel and true to his eternal word and to his eternal law and the passage that Emmett read for us in the book of Hebrews is not the passage we're going to be turning to but the reason I had that read was because that talks about a Sabbath rest a special kind of rest that God has given to us as as his gift and that's what keeping the Sabbath day is all about it's about getting this rest that God wants to give us so now you can turn to our passage which is the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament Ephesians or Exodus chapter 20 Exodus chapter 20 starting with verse 8 8 to 11 and as was mentioned a few weeks ago, we started this series on the Ten Commandments. And throughout this series, we've been asking and we've been saying that some people might ask, why are we studying this? Why are we studying the Ten Commandments? Why are they relevant? Why are they still important for today? And even some Christians might say, well, we're not under the Old Testament law anymore. We're under grace now. So why bother with the Ten Commandments? And we've been answering that question by saying that these laws from God are still relevant. They're still applicable. They're still important, probably more now than they've ever been. And they're important because of three very fundamental reasons. And we've been saying this every week. First of all, the Ten Commandments are still relevant and important today because, as Daryl mentioned, they provide God's eternal, absolute, moral standard of right and wrong. That's the first reason why they're important. Secondly, they provide warning signs for us. They protect us and they keep us safe from moral decay. And third, they're not just warning signs. They're not just thou shalt not. They are also signs that point to blessing and point to life point to abundant life here. And if you turn them around, they're actually Beatitudes, we've been saying. They ultimately point the way to a happy and satisfied and fulfilled life. So as we continue this series, we're going to look at the fourth commandment here in verses 1, or sorry, verses 8 to 11 in Exodus 20 here. It says, and maybe you, you can follow along with me as we read this section here about the fourth commandment. It says in verse 8, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither Neither you nor your son or your daughter nor your manservant or maidservant nor your animals nor the alien within your gates for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them but he rested on the seventh day therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy you know, in the 1981 film, Chariots of Fire, maybe you have seen that film years ago. It won the Academy Award for the best movie that year in 81. And it told the true story of this Christian man, Eric Liddell, uh, who was a very committed 
believer and eventually he went out on the mission field but he was one of the favorites to win the gold medal for Great Britain way back in 1924 in the 200 meter race in the Paris Olympics the only problem was that the 200 meter race was scheduled to be on a Sunday and Eric Liddell had a strict policy as a believer that he would never run a race on the Lord's Day on a Sunday. So he took this fourth commandment very seriously because he believed that Sunday was a day of rest, that it was supposed to be set apart for God. It was the Lord's Day. So he dropped out of that race. And all sorts of people, including his coach and reporters, even the Prince of Wales, were so upset and they tried to convince him to reconsider, but he wouldn't change his mind. And just when it looked like everything was lost, something very unexpected happened and Eric Liddell ended up winning a gold medal after all, because at the last minute he was given a place in another race in the 400 meter finals that was held on another day. And even though he had never run that race before, against all odds, he ran the 400 meter race and set a world record. And when we think about that kind of a story, a lot of us today would think that that guy's position was way over the top. To drop out of an Olympic race because it was Sunday. Why? Why does that seem really unusual and extreme? Because a lot of Christians today, we just see Sunday as another day of the week. It just happens to be the day that we meet together and go to church and there's nothing really special about Sunday beyond that. And I know sometimes I pick on big churches, but there are a lot of bigger churches today in modern times that have gone to multiple worship services on Friday night, Saturday night, throughout the week. And some people never attend church on Sundays because of that. So we kind of have these two extremes. We have Eric Little's generation, and even before that, where Christians held Sunday or the Sabbath in very high esteem. And now in our generation, where it doesn't mean much anymore. And some of us who are my age and maybe up to my age might remember certain activities for Christians like working or playing sports or shopping or swimming or going to the beach. They were all taboo. They were all forbidden. I even remember that even at my young uh, age now. No, just kidding. Uh, Christian farmers back then never did any work on Sundays. I remember reading the story about a town near Chicago in 1875 where the town council, if you can believe this, they decided to pass a law forbidding the sale of ice cream sodas on Sunday because that was considered worldly and uh, not something Christians should be doing on Sunday, drinking ice cream sodas. But as time went on, an enterprising young entrepreneur devised a plan to get around that law by selling ice cream covered with syrup instead of mixing it with soda water. And this new dish didn't even have a name, but it became so popular that people just started calling it Sunday. Then Christian people complained because the new dessert was named after the Lord's Day, so they changed the spelling of the word to S-U-N-D-A-E. And that's where we get our chocolate sundaes today at Dairy Queen. Someone has said our great-grandfathers called it the Holy Sabbath. Our grandfathers called it the Sabbath. Our fathers called it Sunday, but now we just call it the weekend. So in the past, Sunday was considered the Lord's Day, the Sabbath day, where it was supposed to be a day of worship and a day of rest. And a lot of Christians took that very seriously and they came up with a lot of these little rules and regulations regarding what to do and what not to do. And it became very legalistic. So that's the one extreme, legalism. But nowadays, we almost have the other extreme and that's anything goes. 
because a lot of Christians today have no problem with playing or shopping or working on Sundays. So which side is right? When we approach this kind of a commandment, where's the balance? How important is this idea of keeping the Sabbath day holy? Especially in our context, in our culture, what is God really telling us here? And that's the question we want to answer this morning. Because if God has included this in his moral laws, and we've been saying that the Ten Commandments are relevant and applicable and important for us today, why did God put this law in the Ten Commandments in the first place? What exactly is the Fourth Commandment saying to us? What is the principle or the truth here for modern Christians? And it also raises some other questions. Wasn't the Sabbath or Saturday just meant for Jews, for ancient Israel? Christians worship on Sunday now. So how does that apply to us? What if I have to work on Sunday? So which day is the real Sabbath, Saturday or Sunday? And the interesting thing here is that this commandment, the fourth commandment, is the longest one out of the ten. It has more words than any other of the commandments. You shall not steal, just one little phrase. You shall not murder, one little phrase. But this one has a long explanation that goes along with it. And it starts out in a very unique way. Look at verse 8. It says, the first word, remember. Remember. None of the other commandments start out that way. Remember, so God must be telling us something important that he wants us to remember. Because if we're commanded to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy, there has to be an important truth here. So what I'd like us to do now is to look at four points about this Sabbath commandment, having this Sabbath rest. Number one, the first point is the origin of this commandment. Where did it really all start? What was the original principle or the original idea behind this law? Because the Bible makes it clear that the Israelites already knew about this Sabbath idea long before God gave them the Ten Commandments. Because earlier on when they were in the desert and God gave them manna to eat, it says in Exodus chapter 16. If you're in Exodus 20, just flip back to Exodus chapter 16. A few verses back or chapters back. It says in Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. Exodus 16, verse 23. And this is long before the Ten Commandments were given. It says in verse 23 of chapter 16, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left over and keep it until morning. So this is long before Moses went up to Mount Sinai and brought down the Ten Commandments. And then it even goes back further than that. The original idea of this Sabbath rest goes back to creation. And that's what the passage that Emmett read talks about. And of course, if you go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, it says, By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day, made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Does God get tired? No. So what does the word rest here in Genesis mean? Well, it means really, I believe, it means to pause or to settle down, literally to cease doing what you're doing. So when God ceased his work, when he finished creating everything, that's what he did. He rested. And obviously he wasn't burnt out, he wasn't tired, no. He's the omnipotent, almighty God. He wasn't exhausted, he didn't need a physical rest. The idea is that he stopped doing what he was doing. He took a break, he took a time out, he took a recess. 
the kids all know what a recess is. It's time out. Creation was done. Creation was complete. The job was over with. That's the original idea of the Sabbath rest. It points all the way back to creation where God sets the example and he blesses this Sabbath idea and he sanctifies it and he makes it holy as something that we should separate and value and implement into our own lives. And he gives us this basic and this very fundamental truth to live by. We need a break. I don't know about you, but oftentimes we need a time out. And that's the original idea here. Yes, we need to serve God. Yes, we need to work hard. Yes, we need to provide for our families, but we do need to take a regular time out. We need to rest. And oftentimes in our modern mindset, when we think of rest, we think of flopping on the couch. But here it's talking about a complete kind of rest, physical, emotional, and especially spiritual. Bible says that God saw everything that he had made and it was very good. Meaning during his Sabbath rest, during this time out, God took a step back and he looked around and he saw everything and he contemplated and he reflected and he considered everything that he had made. That's the original idea of the fourth commandment. And sometimes in our fast paced lives, we need to take a time out. And we need to step back and we need to cease from our everyday routines and we need to take a rest from our labor. And like I said, that doesn't just mean to stay at home on Sundays and be a couch potato and watch a football game because sometimes we can rest physically, but our minds are still in turmoil emotionally, spiritually, our minds are going a mile a minute. No, this means to rest in every way. Yes, physically, uh, resting in that way might be a part of it, but definitely spiritually and emotionally. Sometimes we think it's just the physical rest that we need, but we need to get rest for our souls. We need to get spiritual and emotional rest too. And we need to do what God did. He took time out. And we need to get that rest in that complete way to reflect and consider and contemplate and examine our lives. Especially in those three areas, the physical, the spiritual, and the emotional, to take that kind of a time out. In Mark 6, 31, and this is talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000 and the crowds are all clamoring to see him. And it says here in Mark 6, 31, then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So Jesus even sets that example and you know, I think in some ways, this global pandemic that we're going through right now is forcing us to take that kind of a time out where we are forced to rest and contemplate our lives and evaluate our lives and examine our lives and consider what life is all about. Consider our priorities and what's important to us. And I think a lot of people, Christians and non-Christians, are being forced to do that. I don't think this happened by accident. And for us as believers this morning, this should be a time where we realize during this timeout, this global timeout, how vital and how necessary and how important it is to find our rest and our comfort in God alone. Because normally in our modern world, you know, it's pedal to the metal, it's oh, we're 
we're plugged in, we're stress-filled, we're consumed by the busyness of our lives, that we don't pace ourselves, and we don't plan ahead, and we don't take this kind of a Sabbath rest that we need. A little girl was asked this one time what she was going to be when she grew up and she looked over at her mother running around the kitchen and then she looked at her dad running out the door headed to work and she said, busy. I'm going to be busy when I grow up. That's what I'm going to be. Remember the account of Mary and Martha in the New Testament. And in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her door to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary wasn't being lazy at that point. She chose the better way, Jesus said, to take time out, to spend some time with Jesus. And another thing about this Sabbath rest isn't just about going to church because some Christians, especially under normal conditions, some of us are more busy on Sunday mornings at church than any other day of the week. So no, this is talking about resting in a complete way and sanctifying that time and setting that time apart, separating yourself from any distraction and then looking at your life and considering God and what he's done and worshiping him and being filled with his spirit, becoming rested and refreshed emotionally and spiritually in God to get refilled and rejuvenated, especially at the start of a new week. It's really talking about having a balanced life. That's what God wants us to remember here. God worked and then he rested. That's the balance. And that's what we need to remember here. Chuck Swindoll once said this, we get so caught up in the busyness of life that we worship at our work, we work at our play, and we play at our worship. The idea behind the Sabbath day is to have a balanced life between those three things, work, play, and worship or between the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. And the main problem for most of us in our culture today is we either work too hard or we play too hard. Or we have too much leisure time in front of our TV or our, our in internet or our iPhones. But the interesting thing is most of us don't have a problem with worshiping too hard. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, man, I've just worshiped so hard this week. I am just so tuckered out. <laughs> no, we don't usually have that problem. And that's why we have to work at it. That's why we have to remember it. That's why God put it in his commandments. We need to plan ahead. We need to have a specific time and a specific day and purposely take some time out. So that's the original idea or the original principle for having a Sabbath rest or a Sabbath day once a week. And of course, in the Old Testament, they had Sabbath years uh, every seventh year. And then after seven times seven years, 49 years, they, they would take a rest from their uh, labor and from farming and their fields and give the fields rest. So the whole principle, the original idea is to have a balanced life between work, play, and worship. 
and to follow the example and to follow the pattern that was set up in the very beginning that God worked and then he rested. He had that balance. And then the second point that I have here, uh, number two, and that's the distortion of the commandment. So the origin of the commandment and then the distortion. By the time we get to the New Testament, what had happened? The Pharisees come along and they had turned the Sabbath day into a long list of do's and don'ts. And there were all these things that you couldn't do on Saturday. And if you'd like to maybe turn with me over to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2. And this is the account of Jesus with his disciples. Mark chapter 2, starting with verse 23. Mark 2, 23. Mark chapter 2, verse 23. It says, One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some of the heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for the priest to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, and here's the key part, he says, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So what Jesus is saying here is that the Sabbath is made for us. The Sabbath is made for man. It's God's idea. It's God's principle. It's a gift, really, to us for our benefit so we can get some rest, some real rest. Rest in Him. It was made for us to help us, to serve us, to give us a break, to refresh us and invigorate us. Not the other way around. Not man for the Sabbath, where we have to serve the Sabbath and we have to follow all these rules and really we become slaves to the Sabbath like the Pharisees had done. And instead of it becoming a gift, it becomes a burden, becomes a curse really, becomes our master and we become its servant and it turns into a religious duty or a legalistic commandment. And that's what we have to be so careful of even today. We need to keep coming back to the original idea, the original principle, and not distort it or change it like the Pharisees did. To come back to the idea that the Sabbath is all about taking time out for God from our weekly routine and balancing our lives by worshiping God, finding rest in Him, and being refreshed by His Holy Spirit and doing that without turning it into some kind of legalistic religious duty or some kind of burden that we feel we have to do and we feel obligated to carry it out or follow a bunch of rules regarding the Sabbath. So that's the distortion of the commandment. And then we come to number three. We come to the third point, and that's the purpose. What really is the purpose? We've, sort, we've uh, hinted on it uh, so far, but really what's the main reason what's the purpose for God giving us this principle about setting aside a time for spiritual rest a Sabbath day well the ultimate purpose is what we've really touched on already and that is so we can find our rest in God so many people today especially during this time they're they're in turmoil, they're exhausted, they're looking for rest, they're looking for calm and peace in their lives. That's the reason why God gave us the Sabbath. And that's what the passage that we read, uh, that Emmett read for us was all about. Uh, I'd just like to read a little portion of that passage, Hebrews 4, again, just verses 9 and 10 from the passage that Emmett read. Hebrews 4, verse 9, it says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his and I believe that every one of us, every human being, has a longing 
we have a soul hunger to find that kind of rest. Everybody does. Every human being. To find that Sabbath-like rest. To find rest for our souls. To be at peace with ourselves and peace with our lives and peace with other people and especially peace with God. There's a passage in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, and it says, He will give him perfect peace whose mind is steadfast or stayed on thee. God wants to give us that kind of peace, that kind of rest for our souls. Bible says to be still and to know that he is God. We're all longing, we're all searching, and especially during this time, we're all looking for that kind of rest. And that's the main reason for God giving us this fourth commandment. And that's why God tells us to remember it, not to forget it. That's why it's so important. That's the whole purpose of the Sabbath day. That's why God gave us this gift. So it's just not about coming to church and going through the routine of uh, coming together and having a program or having a worship service. No, it's so that we can find rest for our souls. And that's the invitation for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are watching this service or here this morning. God gives you this invitation to come to him to find rest for your soul that soul hunger that we all have. Jesus, of course, said, come unto me, all you who are weary and tired and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then he calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. He's the one who ultimately gives us what we're looking for. He's the one where we ultimately find rest for our souls. He's the source. He's the only one who can give us that Sabbath rest. So that should be our longing, our desire, especially as believers and as a church family. That should be our main priority, especially coming together, but for setting aside time for God, even during the week. And a main reason, of course, corporately for coming together and having worship services that should be our ultimate reason to seek him and find fulfillment and find refreshing and spiritual rest for our souls and that should be the main reason for following this commandment not to have the one extreme or the other extreme not to have the attitude of, oh well business as usual when it comes to sunday i can just treat it like any other time any other day or on the other hand not to turn it into some kind of legalistic thing either but to use our sabbath day as our time out to turn our eyes on jesus and seek his face and find him as our resting place because that's where it's at and when we think of it what's the opposite of rest well it's turmoil and it's chaos and it's restlessness within ourselves and when we think of the kind of world we live in isaiah the prophet said the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest that's what sin does. It makes our lives stormy. It messes us up. It stirs things up, makes us restless. And that's where the hope of the gospel comes in. That's at the core of our message, that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the turmoil, we can find rest for our souls. And you know, another problem that comes up Sometimes when we think about the purpose of the Sabbath is sometimes people get hung up about whether Saturday or Sunday is the right day to worship. 
And I've talked to people like this as even in modern times, we have people today who are sometimes called Sabbatarians who claim to be Christians, but they think the Sabbath Saturday is the right day to worship. And of course, we have Jewish people who consider the Sabbath being Saturday, and we have the Seventh-day Adventists who worship on Saturdays. But if we get too hung up on the particular day, then that can also get us sidetracked from missing the main point, that ultimately the main priority and the main purpose is to find rest for our souls. And yes, I believe very strongly that the New Testament is very clear that for Christians, Sunday was set aside as our new day for worship. Resurrection Day, the Lord's Day. Jesus rose on the first day of the week. He appeared to his disciples on the first day of the week. The Holy Spirit descended at Pentecost on the first day of the week. In the book of Acts, the early Christians gathered for worship on Sunday. So I believe that Sunday, I don't think it's, I think it's a no-brainer. I believe Sunday is the normal day for believers, Christians and believers in Jesus Christ coming together corporately for public worship. But again, not to swing over and become legalistic to the point where it becomes a burden and we miss the whole point of gathering together. And we miss the real reason, the real purpose for having a Sabbath day and that's to worship God and take time out for Him to find that rest that we're looking for and to find our Sabbath rest in Him alone. But then on the other hand, I also believe that for Christians, every day should be a Sabbath. Do I get an amen? amen? Yes. That's what having daily devotions or just taking a little bit of time out to spend with the Lord every day to reflect and contemplate and evaluate and turn our eyes and our hearts away from our busy lives and away from ourselves and to look to God and find our rest in Him. So we've looked at the original idea of the Sabbath. That's, it's based on the example of God resting. And then we looked at the distortion of the Sabbath, that it can easily be turned into a legalistic thing. And then we looked at the purpose of the Sabbath, and that it's all about finding rest for our souls. And now we come to the fourth point. Aren't you glad I only have four points? <laughs> and that's the application of this commandment. And we've been touching on this all the way along, but how do we really apply this Sabbath day principle to our lives in real ways, in practical ways. And here are some suggestions. First of all, as believers in Christ, we need to try and find a proper balance in our lives between work and leisure and worship. And we all struggle with that. I struggle with that. When I get a little burned out, what's my tendency? Flop on the couch and turn on the TV. If I were to be really honest, or turn on the internet now that I am plugged in. To find that proper balance between work and leisure and worship, and then to develop a lifestyle of spiritual resting and seeking that and wanting that. Not just a time out, like I say, to flop down and get that kind of a rest, but to develop the idea of a spiritual discipline of taking time out every day to get rest for my soul, to get that spiritual refreshing and that spiritual boost and the spiritual energy, the spiritual uplift, uplift that we need to make it through. Because if we do that every day as a regular habit, we remember to do that. Then when it comes to Sunday, we will be spiritually awake and spiritually alert and spiritually ready to go when we gather together and we'll want to come to church for the right reasons not just because it's our routine or it's what we always do but because we have that sabbath day mentality that kind of thinking where we come together because we want to find more rest for our souls and that should be our main motivation, really, for coming to church Sunday mornings, 
first day of the week to be refreshed spiritually, to get refilled and refueled and rejuvenated and find our peace and our rest in, and our satisfaction in God again, to get rested and get ready for the new week. That's the great thing about Sunday being the first day of the new week. We, are, we want to get refreshed and ready to go. That's why we should come to church as God's people. And may that be our desire as a local church, as individual believers here in Napanee, Ontario, to focus on the real reason for God giving us this Sabbath day. And that's to look to the Lord of the Sabbath every day and especially when we gather together, to turn our eyes on Jesus and confess our sins and make things right with him and get refilled and refreshed and re-energized spiritually because that's the only way to find lasting rest for our souls. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, we're going to pray, and again, I just want to uh, give an invitation to anyone who might be watching this at a later time. We usually get the virtual service out by Sunday afternoons now, so you might be watching this later, and you might just be tuning in. You might be somebody tuning in from a distance, and this might be completely new to you, and you're watching this service for the first time, or maybe you have never really considered Christianity, we want to give you an invitation. We want to share the gospel with you. And we've been touching on what the gospel is. I've been mainly preaching to believers, but we want to reach out to you. If you're watching and you have never put your trust and your faith and your rest in Jesus, we would invite you and challenge you and welcome you to come to Jesus. Jesus said again, come unto me, all you who are tired, and I will give you rest. And he is the one who can provide what you're looking for when it comes to that peace and calm and rest in your lives. But the invitation comes with also a challenge that when we come to Christ and we are saved and we are born again and we put our faith in him, we have to turn from ourselves and we have to turn to him and repent and turn from our sin and trust him, give our lives over to him and believe that he died on the cross for us. And that's when we are truly saved and brought into the kingdom of God, brought into God's family because of him. And so I would just challenge you if you're watching and this is all new to you to do that right now, to put your faith in Jesus Christ and find rest for your soul. So let's pray together and let's just close our service. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the God that you are. We thank you that you have given us this fourth commandment really as a gift because in ourselves we wouldn't have that balance. We would be burned out continually and we would be busy to the extreme without remembering to take time out for you and to find that Sabbath rest in you alone. And of course, we are prone to find solutions for our burnouts and for our, uh, our extreme activity and for finding rest in other things, but they never satisfy. Only Christ can satisfy. And so thank you for reminding us about that this morning. I pray that you would bless each one who came out today and each one who is watching. Draw each one close and reveal yourself and speak to each heart, I pray. And if there is something that needs to be uh, dealt with and needs to be changed, Lord, change us. Help us in this whole area to rest in you as our rock and our refuge in the storms of life. And we are going through a, a real storm with this pandemic in many different ways. So Lord, bring calm, bring peace, bring rest to our hearts and our lives and our souls, we pray. Bless each family, bless each home, bless each individual and help us to return next week for our next Sabbath rest. 
for that refreshing and that refilling that we all need. And we will give you the praise in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. God bless you. God is good. Thank you, Pastor. That was an amazing message. It, uh, it also shows us that uh, sometimes we need to let go of control in our lives. We want to be in control. We want to control the situations that we're facing. But sometimes we don't have the answers. And it's so important that we set aside that time for just to ask him, Father, uh, what are your solutions to the issues that I'm facing? And for us to give up that control that we seek so much. I am his and he is mine. sounds like kind of corny but uh, when you first come to faith in Christ when you first learn to see through his eyes things do seem greener colors brighter and everything seems to be different and I think this also is why we have this Sabbath rest so that we can enjoy what God is doing, yeah. both in our lives and all around us. That we can begin to see through His eyes 
and understand where his heart is.